in order to figure out what your character's objective is. That's why I'm like... <laughs> Janola is taking down Mr. Bowler Hartman. Hey friends! John here and welcome to the Martial Actor and this is the Performer's Playground and I've got Riley Haviland on the show today. We don't follow the America First crowd. Jar to wallet. Thanks for joining me, Riley. Thanks for having me. I'm yeah, so excited. I yeah. love your channel. Your channel is so fun. Oh, that's so nice of you. I learn tons every time I watch. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah, I thought it was a fun little thing to do during Corona. Fun way to like produce my own work and get some stuff out there. So. Yeah, have actual social interactions. Right, <laughs> exactly. So thanks again for coming. Yeah. Super happy to have you. So we recently just worked together again on set. It was my first time being back on set since lockdown. And we were doing like a student film for one of our friends yeah. and you played the lead, which was super cool. She brought me on as a stunt coordinator and Riley was playing the lead. And it was like a very interesting, like modern day college girl juxtaposed with like medieval, like dream sequences with a lot of fighting and stuff. Yeah. And it was really cool. I'd never gotten to work with you in a fight coordinator capacity. And I was super <laughs> surprised with how quickly you picked everything up, Aww. which was like, <laughs> It looked really great, and I'm super excited to see the final product. Oh, but dude, me too. <laughs> how was that for you? Like, that whole journey as an actor. Yeah. First off, like, I would love to hear how you built that character. Mm -hmm. And then also, like, with the more fighting combat aspect, like, how that was for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that project was so, so, so fun. Um, I love, love, love what our friend did with the script because that's kind of like my dream role a little bit. I love Snow White from Once Upon a Time. Yeah. How she gets to do both the modern stuff and the fantasy stuff. Mm -hmm. And so when I got cast in this role, I'm like, oh yes, because we get to have all of the cool real life stuff going on where I get to do all this character building and all of this depth. And then we get to do the fun part where it's this medieval fantasy battle scene mm -hmm. and I get to fight off a whole bunch of guys. <laughs> we literally had like an army of 20 people that we were working with. Yep. It was super fun. Army of these like big giant dudes in their full on medieval stuff. We got all these cosplayers and all. So, so fun. Mm -hmm. But let's see, when it comes to building that character, that one was really, really cool because this is so nerdy. But <laughs> I've been for the past several years working on this fantasy novel. Sweet. And I haven't really like kicked it into gear until I got cast in that role. And then I was like, this character that I'm playing is a writer. And she makes up these medieval fantasy worlds that she wants to be a part of. And I'm like, well, I guess I have to work on my novel <laughs> to prepare. That's fair, that's fair. <laughs> and it was really, really cool because the character I was writing is pretty much what I was kind of channeling during all the medieval sequences. Uh -huh. She's this bad A fighter who's like this warrior girl and in the medieval dragon army stuff. And so I was like, this is perfect. <laughs> I get to be her and I get to work on our book a little more. So that's cool. <laughs> when you build your characters, like how do you usually approach it? Is it usually from that like like personal aspect or do you dive more into like building an imaginary background for your characters like what's mm -hmm. kind of your process usually so one of my favorite things that I do that really helps me for some reason and I know everybody's totally got their own style and sure. this doesn't work for everyone but something I like to do is I like to take my character and build them sort of an aura and so I'll pick like which color they kind of emblematize and how the texture flows and whether the aura is stronger at their head their heart their gut their feet that's so interesting and just kind of like what they're most connected with. Are they really cerebral? Are they the kind of person that just acts impulsively? What, what kind of thing they do? And just drawing, I like literally I take my iPad Pro and I like draw it out. I draw, like draw this misty, colorful aura. Cause you're like super into art as well. Yeah. You're, like, you're doing Inktober. Yes. Like you, you're an artist, so that's like mm -hmm. another tool in your tool belt that you can use. Yeah. Illustrating children's books is the day job. That's really cool. That's very cool. So yeah, that's like my favorite thing to do when it comes to building a character. I like think of all the like practical things and stuff like their background and their parents and their relationships and all that. But my sure. favorite part is building that aura to kind of like feel like I'm connecting with them a little bit. How did you find that? Like, how did you discover that? Because I think it's it's really important for every actor to find what works for them yeah. and to find like a trick or find a fallback or find a default mm -hmm. from which to approach your characters. Yeah. Because everyone's so different and everyone works so differently. It, it is really important to find that thing that works for you. Yeah. How did you find that? 
Honestly, I'm not even sure. I've just always had like a thing for like, I love personality quizzes and all of that. And so like with everyone that I know, I like kind of shifted my mindset a little bit and like imagine I can see their aura in, in like real life, these real life people, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'll like try to learn a little bit more about them with like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like a weird, almost third eye thing. I'm not trying to get like, I'm not one of those people. <laughs> I'm not. You can be though. <laughs> but maybe want, I am whatever. a little bit, maybe I am. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just something that I've like always loved to do in real life. And so when I transfer it to characters, it makes it infinitely easier to like connect them with other people who I know mm -hmm. that I'm like, oh yeah, you're on, you're in orange because you're vibrant and you're bright and outgoing and this sort of thing. And then when I play that character, I have a million people who I know who are orange that I can draw from, right? That's so it's oh, really fun. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, thanks. Really cool. <laughs> How did you first get into acting? I don't know if we count this, but there are little videos of me as like a little three-year-old uh -huh. and my mom has the camera in my face and she's like, now do the shy look. And I'm like, <laughs> now do Modeling the mean look. Like and I'm like, mm. and I like do all these things and my mom's like, you're going to be an actress someday. And I'm like, yes, yes I am. So it was just like <laughs> in your blood from the beginning. From the very, very beginning. And then I remember like, you know how you have those movies where you watch them and then you just like feel it and you're like, I have to be an actor. I have to. And so there were some of those movies for me, Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm like, I have to. Keira Knightley? I need, yep, I need to be Keira Knightley. <laughs> and oddly enough, The Ice Princess, I don't know if you've seen that movie. It. It's like, I don't know if it's Disney Channel, but it's very like unto those cheesy, like targeted towards 12 year old girls <laughs> Disney Channel movies. And I watched it and I'm like, she's playing a 16 year old. When I'm 16, I'm going to be doing that too. Sweet. <laughs> But yeah, I'm watching those movies. And then the first acting I really ever did was um, when I was 12 years old. The, I was in a kindergarten through 12th grade high school. Mm -hmm. And so the high school musical was happening and I was allowed to try out as a sixth grader. And I was like, I saw all the posters and I was like, I want to do it so bad. And I like wrote on my little math assignment. I remember writing really tiny in the corner of it. I will try out for the school musical. And then in parentheses, if I can, because I wasn't sure <laughs> and I was embarrassed. And then I went to the audition and it was so bad, but I, they cast me anyway because I was cute and small. And oh, it was just from then on, I was like, this is what I have to do. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. And so like, Tell me a little bit more about your journey from there to now. So mm -hmm. like you started acting, your first acting gig was in high school. Yep. Been enamored with it since you were a kid. Oh yeah. Like <laughs> how did you get to where you are now? So let's see, in high school I did everything possible, right? I did every musical, every show choir thing, every uh, play, went to all the competitions for Shakespeare and everything. Mm -hmm. And then um, I got to college and I was like, well, everyone tells me it's impossible to be an actor, so maybe I'll teach theater or maybe I'll just be a screenwriter or something. Mm -hmm. And then I met my husband and he was the first person who like really was like, oh no, you can do it. You absolutely can be an actor. I'm going to be an actor and people think it's crazy. And as our relationship grew, it was just so amazing because then I had someone who had my back because everyone told me, oh, you can't go be an actor. You'll lose your soul. But having that person in my life who understands the acting world and we're always able to keep checking with each other, make mm -hmm. sure we're still on the path to who we want to be while pursuing that acting dream. Um, that's been life changing. So for sure. Yeah. yeah, I think it's really important to find one person that believes in you. Yep. If you can just have like that one person <laughs> that is like your fan from the day one and mm -hmm. is supporting you and everything you do, it's it's so much more helpful than to try to go at it alone. So that's really cool Absolutely. that you guys can do that together. Oh yeah, so grateful. So, yeah, cause yeah. you are super into improv, improv and super so into fun. like comedy and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Tell me a little bit more about that. How'd you get into improv? Um, Let's see, also Brad, I hated improv. I hated it in high school. <laughs> I like saw the little improv boys and I like labeled them the improv boys. And I'm like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna even be. Well, improv is like a <laughs> terrifying beast in it and of is. itself, like apart from acting. <laughs> Improv is like another level. Yes, and I love it, but it's so stressful. <laughs> it is stressful. Until is I stop stressing out and then it's awesome. <laughs> yes, and it can also be like so fun. And the stuff that can come out of like an organic improv mm -hmm. session sometimes can be so amazingly oh, funny. Oh, absolutely, yes. absolutely. And just straight improv, like the kind we do at Comedy Sports is like so fun and it feeds so well into like film acting and all that mm -hmm. because you just get all these organic moments because you learn to stop thinking and just react. And oh, right. it's so, so good. Yeah. But yeah, and I love doing it with my husband. It's just extra, extra fun because cool. get to share that time on stage and yeah really fun and yeah. it's so fun for the audience because they don't know we're married because we have different last <laughs> names and then we'll just suddenly kiss and they're like what oh commitment. COVID, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> that's 
great. <laughs> so what's like a crazy thing that you've done to prep for a role or a character or something like that? When I was preparing for the role that we were talking about earlier, sure. um, there is a part of it where I'm like supposed to yell and lead the army mm -hmm. and I'm like supposed to yell for country and freedom and all these like epic things and I'd never had a chance to practice before the day because I have a baby <laughs> and I didn't and my only like practice time was when she was sleeping. Mm -hmm. So I remember driving to set and just in the car just yelling at the top of my lungs for country and freedom. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> just feeling so epic and ridiculous. So. That's awesome. Did anyone see you? I feel I like don't that's know. so like I'll <laughs> I'll be like memorizing lines in my car yep. and then look over and be like, don't mind me, I'm just memorizing. <laughs> nope, there's no one else in here. <laughs> I hope someone saw, I really do. <laughs> Last time I talked to you guys, like a few months ago, you guys were planning on moving to Atlanta and then LA, but now it sounds like you're planning on staying. So like, how has that all been working for you guys with acting in corona and like acting in this time of of weirdness for everyone oh, it's so weird yeah. it's so different but you know it's got a couple of good things have been happening for example they often need actual couples to be the ones kissing on camera because they're like we won't want to be responsible if someone transfers covid so me and my husband have been getting cast a lot more because we're married that's awesome yeah like so. same household actors <laughs> exactly. i know is like a thing they're asking yeah. for now the other thing we've been realizing is that just knowing that we're gonna have to probably end up staying here for a little bit longer because it just doesn't make sense to move out to LA right now because there's not as much opportunities right now during corona right um, it's just helped us realize that why should we wait to get the parts we want when we have the writing chops so let's just make our own stuff until something works which is like I am such a big fan of yeah. that I think that I want to be producing my own stuff which is one of the reasons I created the channel and like I don't want to be waiting around anymore for people to validate my yes. talent or like <laughs> Like, give me the roles that I want. If people aren't gonna give it to me, mm. then I'm just gonna make it and like Agreed. we'll see what happens. And we have amazing friends here in Utah like you and all of our crew, so why don't we just all get together and make stuff until finally something works, you yeah, know? I think. I think that it makes a lot more sense than going out to LA and crossing our fingers and hoping, so. Well, and so many actors like had done this that same kind yeah. of thing in order to like get noticed. Yeah. And it's like, yes, you can act outside of your type. You can do what you want. And if people aren't giving you the roles that you want, make those roles for yourself and brand yourself as that. Exactly. Because I mean, I like, I'm a big fan of typecasting because it means you got cast. Right. But at the same time, it's so fun to try out different things and that's the whole fun about acting is getting to play a million different parts If I'm always the cute little girl next door best friend like I'm never gonna grow and it's never gonna be as interesting So so real talk I would love to talk to you a little bit more about your experiences like as a woman in the industry So you were saying like you get typecast as like the girl next door or the best friend or whatever mm -hmm. Like how have you gone about like navigating that mm -hmm. and how do, how do you fight against that typecast while also like like leaning into it to keep getting cast. Yeah. And then just like also your struggles as like a woman in the industry. I don't know what that's like. For and I sure. would love to hear more about it and hear more about how I can be a better ally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, there are plenty of good things about being a cute blonde girl in the film industry. <laughs> sure. Plenty of opportunities to play the cute blonde girl, <laughs> which, which is really, really great. But the other thing is, is there's a lot of cute blonde girls out there. So <laughs> lots of competition because mm -hmm. we're ev like, everyone's capable of being cute. It's makeup, like it's all makeup. So, sure. <laughs> so, you know, it's always fun to try to navigate that and figure out how I can set myself apart a little bit because uh -huh. there are a lot of amazing, beautiful, talented women who want to be actresses and they're mm -hmm. really talented. So trying to figure out different ways to like be different and be noticed while still keeping that element that the casting directors want to see mm -hmm. so that's part of it and then I think as far as the struggles of being a woman in the film industry something that that I really appreciate that people do is making me feel like my opinion is worth something there have been a lot of situations where I'll be in a group conversation where we'll be planning out a project or trying to figure things out and I'll get little to no eye contact from people and mm. often I feel like it's partially because I'm a girl and I don't think they're doing it on purpose at all like it's not entering their mind of well she's a girl I don't care about sure, her opinion but all of us have like internal biases that we deal with every day exactly <laughs> exactly and I think a lot of it is I'm often like in cute makeup and I'm in this cute little outfits and so I don't 
get taken seriously as much because I am cute, therefore I don't have a brain. So <laughs> that's really frustrating. And it's really interesting because I get to see like both sides because I have my husband who's also in the same industry. Right. So I'll get to see the way that he's treated versus the way I'm treated sometimes. And yeah. I'll see often he gets like 90% of the eye contact and I get 10. And when we're standing in a circle, their feet turn away from me because they want to hear what he has to say, mm -hmm. which I mean, he's a genius, he's brilliant. And so obviously I'd want to hear what he has to say. Yes. But and also women need voices at the table. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I have things to say and I have thoughts even though I'm a little bit spazzy and I'm cute. <laughs> <laughs> so like one thing that I've tried to do in those situations is when I hear the women speak up in the group, I feel that a lot too. I feel like a lot of times things get passed over or, or doesn't really get acknowledged yeah. in the same way. And so I'll try to echo it and say like, like this person said, this is a great idea. We should follow up more on that. Can you speak more about that? Oh, so I'll just try to like echo it. Like as a man, I can say like, we should listen to this and then <laughs> give it back. Yeah, which I appreciate a lot. And I especially appreciate that you were saying, like this person said, right. because often people will hear my ideas, it'll get echoed, but then they'll be like, oh, what a good idea, dude. Right, and you then it's like, no, that was her <laughs> Wait idea. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm and contributing. That's yeah, the yeah, thing yeah. Too, so. And then in future stuff, they're like, oh, well, she didn't contribute that much, even though we're doing my idea. You know what I mean? Right. So it can be a little bit frustrating. But, you know, part of that is on me. I've got to be a little more assertive in certain situations. So, but yeah, at the same time, any help of, hey, listen to this person. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah, I think that's one thing that all of us guys can do a little bit better. So <laughs> Everyone needs to listen better. <laughs> Everyone's opinions are important. Even if they're good at certain things, doesn't mean they can't be good at other things. Yeah, well, and I think that's one of the reasons I love film is because it's such a collaborative yes. medium. Even as an actor, I'm collaborating with my other actors, but as I've gotten older and I'm getting more into the producing side of things, yeah. I'm a really big fan of the best idea wins out and all of the ideas should be heard and the best ones will rise to the top. And that's really how you get the best products. Yep. Takes a lot of humility, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll get you the best product and that's what we all want. Yeah. <laughs> if you're in Provo, I'd love you to come watch comedy sports. I'm in that. When do you guys perform? Um, let's see. We already performed this month, but next month we should be in at least a few shows. So cool. I can let you know. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thanks right. for having me. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks again for coming, Riley. Yeah. It was mm. super fun to chat. Yeah. And that's all I've got for you today. So take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And we'll see you next time. Sweet. Yeah. Dude, I love this. This is so fun. Good. Yay! <laughs> okay, I can handle that. It's yeah. two lines. Yeah. So, let's see. Okay. Let me check. I'm gonna restart the camera. Do it. Sweet. I feel like that was because you were pregnant while we were filming workshop, right? Was I? I think you, you had all you. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. During the end of actual workshop. Actual like, workshop. Oh, and then during the film workshop. Yeah, that's what it yep. was. Yep, then the baby was out. I had to go pump in the bathroom a lot. That's what was happening. <laughs> Mom life on set. Yes.